So that means it's a long time that I haven't been here. Amen. Amen. But I thank God for this house. Hallelujah. Amen. About 20 years ago, I walked through that door, and somewhere around that region, there maybe just a little bit in front of where Sister Janice is sitting, I sat in that chair, and I have been trying to leave. Can't leave since then. And I have said it before, but there are some times when the Lord, amen, causes people and certain ministries to cross your path, to push you into your destiny. And I can assuredly say that if I had not encountered this church, I don't think I would be where I am spiritually. I can't say that, I can't. Because whether it was a Friday night after our service, because you know better keep church <laughs> Or a Tuesday night when we popped into evangelistic service. Some of y'all don't remember that used to happen. Or it was a Sunday night. I have been poured in by these people and I'm so grateful. And uh, Evangelist Newman, when I heard that Evangelist Newman passed, I was like, you? I was saying that don't make no sense. Because I just saw Evangelist Newman on a videotape in New Jersey dancing and praising God. So that don't make no sense. And um, I didn't know how old she was. And then I looked at the program today and I realized that she's just a year older than my father, Evangelist Graham, God bless you, and two years older than my mom. So that hits home a little bit more because you realize that, amen, she's not even so far advanced in age, amen? And as I thought about her, some of you have heard the testimony I gave before, but those of you that are here that you have come in contact with the daunting that was on her life, I want to say this. Evangelist Newman is one of those people in the church that had a smooth anointing. Yes. Everybody can't be abrasive and rough and upfront. Now, we need some of that too because you need a balance in the house of God. But Evangelist Newman was like a stealth person. She was a silent killer. It's one of those anointed people that don't have to walk into the service and announce their anointing. I'm not hitting those of you that do that, but I'm just saying some folks don't have to do that. She was a smooth woman. And I watched her because she was the shortest choir member. And I don't know why they have Sister Newman all the way in the back. But I realized that it's because she was a stealth soldier. Anytime that woman of God would march, no matter how much the people around her was bounding with energy, I was watching her. Because she's... And, and did you see her feet? Because the evangelist woman slid. And... I remember for years, I would always hear this voice on the choir. Usually when all of the noise died down, you hear this beautiful language going up. I'm saying, who is that? Just rolling off like some nice sounding language. I'm saying, who is that? And then one of the times I got again, I said, that's that lady. She was a step soldier. Walked in the power of the anointing. And when the Lord assigned her, she moved. And one night I came to Bethel and I preached. And after I finished preaching, I was outside there. It might have been the first time Sister Newman spoke to me. And this was a couple years ago. And she said, she said, come here. You know, half in English, half in tongues, and the anointing was resting on her. And you know, she gave you that. You know? And she said to me, she said to me, she said, when this is the kind of thing I'm talking about when people are anointed. Because everybody, no, that's not even important, but we're running down folks that are prophetess, prophet, bishop, yes, 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 yes. and you don't even know the anointing yes, sometimes. Yes, yes. Around. It wasn't nobody from any other, it was this, this woman of God that said, come here. She didn't care that I just preached down the place, that's my point. The point is, listen, when you go home, she said, grab your wife, and she said, anoint her here and here. So I said, oh, okay, because I didn't even know my wife was feeling pain. And my wife said, that's funny. I said, why? She said, because I've been feeling pain right here and right here. She said, when you go home, put your hands on her, massage the area, and anoint her. Jesus. And 
I was, I was like, wow, you know, God's going to do something. By the time I got home, I forgot what she said. And so it never happened. And about two years later, we ended up at the doctor, and my wife found out that she was pregnant. And it was two years, two years of trying, and nothing was happening. And the doctor ran some tests and said to her, let me tell you why you haven't gotten pregnant. And when she began to tell her all of the things that was going wrong in her body, all of the things that were wrong were centered right here and right here. And I had to testify so Sister Newman could hear and know that way before the doctor found the problem, this woman who the presidents and the kings don't know was anointed by God himself and the revelation of what was happening in her body was shown to her. And I, I was amazed at the power of God that rested on her and I thank God for that connection because it made that quiet lady that I admired become personal to me. And I can tell you this, that the only time I ever came to Bethel and didn't see Sister Newman on the choir is during the time that her husband passed away. And that spoke volumes to me because for it to have affected her, I said, yeah, that must have been one of those kind of marriages. And I looked at the program tonight and my heart goes out to the family because I see how much their relationship is being remembered together. And if you think about it, for this family tonight, you, you kind of have to absorb the blow because when you lose your patriarch and you have the matriarch left, you want a couple of years well with her because you're still dealing with the pain. You know they say nothing. Y'all haven't lost anybody, you don't know what I'm saying. When my grandfather died, it was like Superman died. And God was gracious to us and gave our grandmother to us for 13 years. And I'm telling you, the 13 years of having her helped us heal from losing him. So when you lose that giant of a man, and I can only assume he was, and then you are looking to spend some time with the matriarch and she slips away quickly like that, you got to understand it's like a double blow. And so we want to pray for them tonight especially. And I want to speak to them and I want to speak to you tonight on this wise, really quickly because I'm sure that I have no time left. Amen. We found the remedy for the sting. We found the remedy for the sting. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse 51 through 57. And in the interest of time, I will read it in your hearing. Amen? Amen. Usually I would tell you, trust me, but trust me tonight. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death! Where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But somebody shout but. Thanks be to God. Which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I might as well read 58 for the church. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I close my Bible, that means I'm halfway through. I thought about Sister Newman, and today we were talking because you know Aretha Franklin's funeral was live today, so all day at work, it was in the background. And she was having one of those Jamaican funerals that never ended. Amen. And they tried to put some God in there, and they tried to put some politics in there, and they tried. You see, they tried, they tried. They, they tried, they tried, they tried. 
And I thought to myself, you might as well jump and shout and hope that she's resting in peace. I'm not God, so I don't know, but listen, you might as well give a good shout and hope. And, and I was talking and saying to myself, you got the, the converse of that funeral. You have uh, Senator McCain's funeral. I'm not going to be watching that one because it's not going to be as lively, I'm sure. So, And I know they're going to be as long. But two of the giants in this culture have passed away. And somebody said it before, and it's true. While those two giants have gone, and everybody is lamenting and mourning, there is another level of mourning. Because peradventure, because we don't know, but peradventure, the sting of death is still over their head. And I walked in here tonight and I thought to myself, there are moments tonight that would cause you to cry. And there are moments that would cause you to feel sad. And I'm not one of those people that come to funeral and tell people don't cry. The devil is a liar. Amen. If y'all don't see my wife crying at my funeral, take a pin and stick her. <laughs> because if you have known somebody who has touched your life, it is only human. I'm like, y'all don't want to say amen. But even Solomon said, there is a time to cry. And death is one of those times. And you can tell me how strong you are, but even Jesus wept. Yeah. And, and people like to talk about Jesus wept because the people were unbelieving. And I don't know that. I know that Jesus' friend died. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that Jesus must have felt bad yeah. when his friend's sisters said, you should have been here. Yeah. And made him feel like maybe he had really gone too far this time. And so Jesus wept. But after Jesus went, Jesus must have remembered who he was. Uh -huh. And Jesus said, let me remind you for a minute. Let me dry my tears. And let me remind you that there is really no reason for anybody to cry. Because right standing in your midst is eternal life. And, and here the sister said, come on Jesus, we are all going to rise at the... Jesus said, you don't understand. I'm not talking about shall rise. I'm talking about the life giver. The resurrection is right here. Now, you're waiting for something to happen down the road, but I'm telling you that right now, you can have what's coming. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he said, roll that stone away. And he woke up his friend. Before Jesus came, I feel the Holy Ghost now. Before Jesus came, Martha was crying. And Martha ought to be crying because it was her brother. Before